welcome to another Archaics Van Vlog. It's been a while. I did insert a couple Jeep vlogs in there, especially for Archaics TV. But I've got all kinds of work being done on the van. I got a, I got a, a steel bumper right here in the back. A whole kit that's already been specifically made to spec. I have to get a, a welder to put it on. Well, I'm slowly doing upgrades to the van. Get it all the way I want it. I want it. So I can do some real van vlogs. Cross country. Like I did in New Mexico and Arizona and California. So. So many new people to my channel don't understand how critical it is for us, for us to be on the same page. We need to comprehend as a community how much chronological material is out there available to us that has been widely ignored simply because false paradigms have been have been put out there and accepted so blindly. We have no fact checkers. We don't have people uh, being, you know, we don't have people who are uh, supposed to, we don't academia. I'm accusing them that they haven't done what they're supposed to do in peer review. Why don't we have any academic chronologists? None. It is absolutely ignored. And yet we have more chronological information than any other field out there to put together. I've been doing it for 25 years. My Chronicon is just an attempt to show you just how much of this data that we have. It is not all the data. I have never claimed to have it all. But we have to, under, but we have to understand as a community that the, re the resistance to the archaics material is by design. The resistance is real. Once, once it becomes apparent that the Shar Anunnaki dating is wrong and that Shars never meant years and that it was widely known even in the days of the Greeks that the Shars were days because Greek historians factored them as days, if I have shown on my channel. Once it becomes widely known that the Shar is a single turning of the stars, it automatically puts into perspective so many hundreds of other chronographical markers that we have found strewn through ancient traditions, even legends, but specifically cuneiform writings concerning king lists and prisms, concerning the 10 kings before the flood, concerning the eight kings before the flood, concerning the seven Anunnaki kings of, of some weird uh, Sumerian dynasty, supposedly ruled for 241,200 shars. So across the spectrum, we find Christian writers talking. They tell us as well that, oh, look, uh, these writings are, are uh, 241,200. These are demonic seven kings. And they're even buying into the same model. I say, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? No Christian authors should buy into the ancient aliens model. The book of Genesis is very clear. The first timekeeping system was the day. And time was factored at night. The evening and the morning was the first day, and God saw that it was good. The evening and the morning was the second day. The entire Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, Near Eastern model is predicated on the fact that the day began when the sun went down. The nighttime always preceded the day and began the day count. The Shar was simply a turning of the stars. And once you understand that, you understand that there was no 432,000 years according to the Vedic system. No. The Vedic system has, has these great yugas at 216,000 units. It was always days. How do we know this? Because the older, the older calendars that all started at the same time as, as the Kali Yuga, that started at the same time as the Sumerian and Akkadian calendars, were the ancient American calendars. They all started within a 21 year period of each other. That should tell you something. As I show on my channel and show in charts, we are talking about 58 centuries for all the most ancient calendars in the world that used units of hundreds of thousands to all begin in a 21 year period shows that they were all uniquely a part of one system. That was the day count system. The Mayan long count calendar, the Olmec calendar, Epigonal, the epigonal system, the, the calendar round, these were all day count systems. I'm not going to beat you up with it. 
our KX veterans already know the Mayan long count system it deals in it deals in the same numbers as the Sumerian and the and the Vedic a single epic of the Maya was called a Bactan it was 144,000 days two of those epics was 288,000 days three of those epics was 432,000 days just like the Sumerian texts that read that the gods appeared 432,000 shars before the flood. It's only 432,000 days before the great flood of Noah, 2239 BC, which means that Enki and the 50 Anuna appeared in the year 3439 BC, which the book of Jasher, very specific, 456th year Annus Mundi was the 456th year of the 1656 years of the of the pre-flood world in Genesis when you translate that to our modern ADBC calendar it is the year 3439 BC it is the appearance of Enki but in the Genesis narrative it is the appearance of Jared whose name means to descend Jared was who he's the father of Enoch. Enoch was who? He's the architect of the Great Pyramid. All this, all this comes through multitudes of data sets. It's not the subject matter of this video. Once it's understood that all these ancient calendars are talking about day count systems, the entire Anunnaki narrative fits perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. 5239 BC, the beginning of the Anunnaki calendar. 5239 BC is 432,000 turnings of the stars to the first appearance of the Agigi when the moon appeared in the year 4039 BC. This is 144 years before the beginning of the Anno Domini calendar, which is known to you guys. My archaic veterans know this is 3895 BC. It's the Adam and Eve reset. Every bit of this fits together perfectly like a woven tapestry of chronology. And it's very easy to understand. At the end of this video, I'm showing you a chart and I'm blowing the chart up. It's three and a half minutes of me going through one single chart, just blowing up different parts uh, for you to understand that everything I'm telling you in this video fits within this chart. That everything we know from the historical and traditional records all fit on this chart. All we have to do is divorce ourselves from the false interpretation of Zechariah Sitchin, which is copied by many people, many people who are still stringently, despite the fact that I have published these data sets, Billy Carson continues to push this narrative. So I'm going to continue to stay on Billy Carson's ass. I'm not going to be quiet about it. He's not the only one. I'm going to reach out and touch some, some of his compatriots. All these guys are lying to you. These systems are, it's easily provable. The data sets are out there. No one has ever refuted them and nor can they. They are set in stone. I have published them freely to the public and I'm gonna to continue to publish them. But the Shar is a day, it never was a year. There is no Anunnaki history going back hundreds of thousands of years. The 241,200 Shars of the seven kings of the, Anunnaki, of the Anunnaki prism called the king list is very specifically divided by 360 Shars. It's very simple. It's so simple. That means that the entire 241,200 Shars day count it's just 670 years. It's the same 670 years mentioned by the prophet Nostradamus. 670 years, at the end of that 670 year period, was the Typhon Flood, known as the Phoenix Cataclysm, the Great Flood of Noah. 2239 BC was the 670th year. The, the reign of the Seven Kings was over. It is done. It's precisely what Nostradamus says. The feet that many will die before the phoenix dies at the end of his reign, 670 years. Guys, I've tied all this together for you in a nice little package. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of data, but I've abbreviated everything to its lowest common denominators through over 600 and something videos. We need to, uh, we need to understand as a community that we are never going to be able to put that put together the accurate history of the world as long as is a significant amount of people are still holding on to this false narrative 
that shars are years and not days. And that the Egyptians counted everything in the same years we do, although the Egyptian texts are very specific that they only counted moons. Why is this relevant? It's relevant because Atlantis is used over and over by these people. Matthew LaCroix is real bad about this. Billy Carson's bad about this. Jimmy Corsetti's talked about it. I don't know how far deep into it he is, but uh, 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 Graham Hancock especially, the father of Atlantis deception, Graham Hancock especially, all of them pushing this Ice Age narrative, which is absolutely untrue. Their principal prima facie evidence for Ice Age dating is the Atlantis story. But that's only because they're using the 365.25 day year of modern times and imposing, a, imposing it upon a culture that did not factor time using this system. The Egyptians counted the moons. This is why all the Egyptian papyri say that different events are 23,000 units uh, 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 after this, or the, king, or, or the gods appeared uh, 14,000 units in the past. It's all moons. This isn't Jason telling you this, I've published the data. How many ancient authors corrected, not just, not just a, 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 oh man, I'm drawing a blank. Even in Plato's day, he was corrected. The 9,000 years of Plato was a total mistake on Plato's part. It's 9,000 moons. And this puts Atlantis where it's supposed to be. The Sea People's Federation War against the Greeks in the Mediterranean and the fall of the Hittite Empire, the fall of Troy, which is a finger of the Hittite Empire. All of this makes sense. It's in my videos for anybody to watch. All these guys are willingly ignoring all this information because they have already put out all this false data and they don't want to retract it. I understand that. But by continuing to put out that false data, now they're doubling down. So if they thought there was any backup in me, they were sorely mistaken. I'm only going to get more and more popular, and my message is going to get wider and wider and because it's not, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the fact that people are basically intelligent. And once the truth is known, it cannot be covered. So they're digging themselves a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. I wouldn't take my spiritual information from somebody trying to sell me crypto any damn way. It's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. Crazy. So, this is all. This is where we're at. The day count system and the moon count system are both found in the Old Testament. Do I believe 100% of the Bible is true? Absolutely not. You guys, my case better already know where I stand on the Bible. It's a, it's a book of good and evil. It contains fact and fictions. Much of it was copied from older sources. There's no doubt. No doubt, guys. But the Sumerian reg, the Sumerian regnal lists, the Sumerian prisms, the Akkadian Kish king lists, everything, everything now fits into where its proper historical perspective, and we no longer have to deal with dates that are impossible. We don't. We don't. That's the importance of those systems. Further, one of the data sets, I've talked about it a lot on my channel, but one of the data sets, that it's the last one. I've already released the data sets on the shards, on the moon counts, and on the accurate dating of Atlantis. I've already released the data sets uh, on, uh, on how recent the Zodiac, how the Zodiac's not even ancient. Yeah. On procession, the change of the year from 360 days to 365.24 days. Those data sets are already released. But I need to release a data set on the Great Flood, the actual dating of the Great Flood, how science and chronology merge to exactly pinpoint the Great Flood of Noah, the Typhon Flood of Phoenix, 2239 BC in the month of May. That's my last data set that I, that I need to publish. And then I have like, I think it's nine, a total of nine data sets that completely undermines almost every paradigm foisted about the past today. The great, knowing the actual date of the Great Flood is super important 
because then it puts into perspective all the things that we have found chronologically about the unfolding of all these different languages, the development of different linguistics, the rise and fall of the Kwipu, Kwipu communication system. All these things are absolutely necessary to understand the proto-Chinese, proto-Sumerian, and proto-Egyptian uh, uh, hieroglyphs all came from the same system. It is very easily, easily noticeable. Now, we do have problems in anthropology where they have pushed these dates back to impossible times. Literacy has been pushed back too far. Knowing the exact date of the Great Flood also put, puts into perspective and allows us to know the exact date of the building of the Great Pyramid. Because the traditions attached to the Great Pyramid were very specifically that it was that it was built before the Great Flood. It, it was to survive the cataclysm known as the Great Flood, and it was and it was to have encoded within it the knowledge for a future civilization to be able to decipher so they can understand the situation that we're in. These cataclysm protocols that need to be understood, they are encoded within the Great Pyramid. Is this just Jason speaking or has he already shown it in myriads of presentations and published books? That's up for you to decide. I'm always willing to, to allow an educated public to make the decision. This is why I do not fear debate. I do not fear debate at all. I don't fear critical analysis of my data because I will take every single, every single critical uh, uh, dissection of, or whatever you want to call it. Anybody, anybody's, anybody attempts to, to critique my material, they can't do it in a video. There ain't no way you're gonna, in a video, you're gonna go through all of my data sets. There's just no way. You're gonna have to put your you're gonna have to put your critique in writing to be taken seriously. There's no other way. I got too much data. Remember, guys, I'm telling you all the time. If something is true, it can always be seen from multiple different perspectives, multiple different mathematical vantage points. So anybody anybody who wants to step up to the plate and critique all my material, you got your work cut out for you. But I'm inviting it. Definitely inviting it. And you're gonna have to itemize all all. all Everything, everything you think is wrong, bullet point presentation, cite your sources, show me your math, and I will publicize it. I will put it on my channel. I will put it on my website. I will let people review your material. I'll give them sufficient time to review your material. And because I'm 100% positive on, on the arithmetic of my chronology, then I will, I, will, I will then dissect your critique and I will show you why you are wrong. It's very easy for me to do won't even take any effort. That's where we're at. It is all necessary. The aggression is necessary. Why? Because so many people have put out all this material and they all, listen, they all agree with each other. Most of these men have never even done the real research. They, re they read Andrew Collins. They read, Han uh, they read Zechariah Sitchin. They'll come out and read four or five books by all these and think they know, and think they absolutely understand Oh, oh, history. They understand all these systems. They read two paragraphs about procession in, in one of Graham Hancock's books and actually think procession is a real thing. Yeah, guys. Archaeoastronomy. All these archaeoastronomers out there dating ancient monuments using the zodiac. Yeah, well, all that falls apart when you well, for two, two data sets kill all that. The very fact that the Greeks invented the zodiac. In ancient India, the Vedic scholars even admit, oh, we got the Zodiac from the Greeks. Oh, okay, thank you. Alexandrian Library, creation of the Zodiac. Yeah, guys, take that to the bank. I'm not saying astrology is fake. I'm saying that in astrology, there was no Zodiac before the Greeks. And that's a real big problem. Most ancient Zodiac in Egypt is the Zodiac of Dendera. That's a problem. Because the Zodiac of Dendera was built by the Macedonians. Who were the Macedonians? They were the Ptolemies. Who were the Ptolemies? The Ptolemies were the Greek rulers of Egypt in the 3rd and 2nd century BC. Why is that a problem? Because they were educated by Alexandrian Library, founded by Alexander of Macedon. Do your homework and you'll find out that all these things, except to be true today, are absolute bullshit. You cannot date monuments prior to the 3rd century BC using a system that was created in the 3rd century BC. Anything prior to that 
does not have zodiac alignments. You can't date the zodiac. That's how Graham Hancock deceives you and gets you to accept a 10,800 year BC dating for a different a, so a different type of monument. He'll go, he'll go through all these ancient monuments and use stellar alignments and computer software and get you to think, oh man, he, he's on to something. He's using a computer showing me that Leo was right here. Therefore, this structure right here was built when Leo was in the con. This is the age of Leo. Absolute poppycock. Total bullshit. Now, if you guys think I'm just picking on, I'm picking on Graham Hancock, let me explain. If you think I'm just picking on Billy Carson, you need to understand. None of these men have come to the to the table. None of these men have stepped up to the plate. That should tell you something. Nothing out of my mouth should matter as much. The weight of the evidence and the proofs that I bring to the table, that all this is BS. Nothing I bring to the table should affect you more than the fact of their silence. That should tell you everything. That should tell you everything, guys. The second, the second body of evidence that completely nullifies all the, the imposition of archaeoastronomy to use the zodiac to date ancient monuments and all that absolute BS is the very fact of the data set that I showed about what happened in the year 713 BC when the sun retrograded 10 degrees and it was recorded in both hemispheres. That's another unbreakable data set. All the civilizations in the world only knew a 360 day year. And then something happens in the sky and then the sun behaves erratically and it's recorded in both hemispheres. A plasma discharge from the sky vaporizes 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. <coughs> all wearing armor and all kinds of shit. Big old antenna vaporized. In the apocalypse of Barak, says the Israelites went out there and looked at the battle, looked at the looked at the uh, the battlefield. They found nothing but melted armor and swords and all kinds of stuff. All biological materials had been incinerated. They had turned to ash. It's crazy. And then every culture, every civilization, every priesthood in the world changed their calendars from 360 to either 364 day, days a year with a leap with a leap year with a leap day uh, every four years or 365 uh, uh, days a year and then they had to take it a day out every 10 years or so they came up with all kinds of different systems That's why we have so many different ancient calendars so what happened? That data set alone, the very fact that the year changed because something in the sky changed, that alone also completely kills archaeoastronomy. If you don't factor that into, into your computer simulations, you can't get an accurate date from a, plan, from a, a, a stellar or a, pla, a, a planetary alignment using your software. If your software doesn't take that into consideration, you're, you are off by 5.24 days for every single year beyond 713 BC. None of your, none of those books matter. Nothing said in those books can be true. That's how big this is, guys. That's why archaics has been met with absolute silence. What I have brought to the table collapses 99% of all information that has already been put into the field. It is false. It's BS. There's some good, there's some good information out there, but you can't get it through zodiac dating. You can't get it through archaeoastronomy. Dude, there's some good chronologists out there. In the past, I've cited them. Crazy world we live in. These day count systems, the systems, and these moon count systems are important to understand because it, it alters the fundament of everything we know in the unfolding, sequential unfolding of historical events, puts them in their proper perspective during the pre-flood world. It allows us to date all the Tepe sites. There's nothing important about Gobekli Tepe. These were the Edens of the ancient world in Turkey. There's nothing important about 
the cattle Huyuk. It's just another Huyuk site. The Tepe sites were first. They were the walled enclosures. Then came, after the Edens were no longer useful, then came the Huyuk sites. Like cattle Huyuk. <laughs> these were different though, because these, these Huyuk sites demonstrate a vapor canopy world. This is another thing that Archaics has brought to the table that is being totally ignored. The vapor canopy scenario changes. It totally alters what we know about the unfolding of historical events. It changes their timing. It gives us, it makes us understand the mechanism of floods, what the Phoenix is doing, why it was called the Typhon flood in the ancient world. Stupid ass ice age theory is so dumb. So dumb. Yeah, guys. Uniform, uniformitarians are programmed to believe in certain data sets as being un, un, uh, true, and they're not. The more you scrutinize the material, you find out that it's all built on supposition. Suppositions are built on hypotheses. Hypotheses are built on the framework of theories that were never proven, but were, but were asserted as facts in books from the 1960s, 50s, 40s, 30s, 30s, and 20s. But when you go back to the original materials, you find out that all these were mere assertions. They only became fact after publishers turned them into facts over and over and over. They were never made facts by the empirical evidence of observation. It never happened. Never happened. If you're still believing in NASA, then, you, then you're basically living in a pinwheel version of, of, of reality. Facebook educated and there's nothing that anybody can do for you. It's crazy. It's crazy what people what people will allow themselves to believe. It's just it astonishes me. When we when, when we go back to the day count and the moon count systems, it helps it helps us understand. I showed you guys my data sets. We don't not only do do we have the accurate dating for the for the uh, pyramid, <coughs> excuse me, but the Great Pyramid dates itself. The Great Pyramid accurately dates itself. Pyramid construction was begun in 2905 BC. It was the year 990 Anno Mundi. Pyramid construction ended. 1080 moons later, 1080 moons later, 90 years, 90 years of Great Pyramid construction. It was completed in 2815 BC. I have shown this from multiple different mathematical vantage points. I have shown this from scientific analysis. I have shown this from chronographical material, ancient text, and the writings of other chronologists. It's absolutely precise. The Great Pyramid is self-referencing. <clears throat> well, when, we, when we understand that the Great Pyramid of Giza is absolutely a stone lithic three-dimensional template of world calendars, every bit of this makes sense. Every bit of this makes sense to find all the calendars of the world encoded within the rectilinear dimensions of the Great Pyramid. You guys know it. Mark Cakes veterans know I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Data set after data set after data set showing you that the Great Pyramid is a prophecy in rock. This was known as far as it was suspected a thousand years ago. It was demonstrations began in the 1860s with John Taylor, then Robert Menzies, then astronomer Royale Charles P. Ozzy Smith. Yeah, that's that's when demonstrations began showing that the rectilinear measurements were actually were actually prophetic timelines. It's amazing. Then we had a giant in the field of science, Sir Flinders Petrie, who went in there and used a micrometer and measured everything in the Great Pyramid and scientifically published his, his, his measurements. And those are the only measurements that I use. Those are the measurements also only used by engineer David Davidson. And we come, we came to the exact same conclusions. That's right. The only difference between David Davidson and I is 
I had written I had written Chronicon after 20 years of chronological research, and I had a more accurate understanding of the of the unfold sequential unfolding of historical events. He did not have a chronology done. So he wasn't able to find all the things that I have found and published. But in my published books, in the M700 and something videos, a whole bunch of articles. Yeah, guys. This is, it's amazing. It is, it is absolutely amazing. Also, what our kegs have brought to the table that no one has ever published before is the Phoenix phenomenon found by the day count system. And in the moon count system, it is commensurate. How do we know this? Because in the, in the Phoenix chronology, it is 138 years. But it's self-referencing. How do we know it's self-referencing? Because every 138 years, the Phoenix phenomenon visits our world somewhere and in some capacity at different orders of magnitude. But 138 years is exactly 1656 moons. It's self-referencing. The pre-flood world was 1656 years, which is exactly 12 times 138. <clears throat> the more we study the calendrics of our reality, the more we come into contact with the fact that, the, that as observers of the construct from within the construct, we are confronted with the, the perspective of someone observing an unfolding Mandelbrot set. Everything is in proportion. Everything is repetitive. It's in a loop, and it's all self-referencing. Can't make this stuff up, guys. Just can't make this stuff up. This is exactly... This is exactly why these men are ignoring this. I wouldn't doubt it if, like, Matthew McCroy, maybe, or or uh, Jimmy Corsetti have gone, have tried to go deep in my material, but they just weren't able to because the archaic material is, it overturns all that BS we're talking about, ancient aliens and all that crap. So, the other thing we have to get, we have to take into consideration is the, uh, Another thing we have to take into consideration is the dark satellite chronology. The Tower of Babel story. All of these are all of these are found out. Uh, uh, all of these unfold and give us more more inf calendrical information on these ancient on these ancient calendars and, and how they process time. Hell, that every time the dark satellite comes, it does major edits to our reality. There is no way this can be possible if we live in a material, basically a, a Newtonian universe. We can't live in the world, uniformitarians tell us, tell us for these things to be true. The absolute precision of chronological systems passing over the 713 BC threshold of the year changing from 360 to 365 uh, days a year is absolutely impossible in a Newtonian universe. We are in a construct that can be changed. <laughs> but if we were in a real world, in a real universe, that change would have never been, ne never allowed for the perfect unfolding of 138 year Phoenix visitations. Remember, Phoenix is the keeper of the calendar. Remember, Phoenix was regarded by the Israelite tribe of Ishakar. Remember, the tribe of Ishakar were, were the one, the only of all the Israelites who were told to be the keepers of the times. That's right. So, it's a, uh, it's by understanding the unfolding of these historical ca ca calendrical systems that we understand that the Jewish the Jewish calendar is an ex post facto imposition upon our world. It is a falsified construct that leads you in, into rabbit holes for which you cannot escape. The Jewish calendar was specifically created to throw you off. You are not going to be able to figure out where we are in the timeline of the construct if, if you adhere to the Jewish calendar. I have shown the data set. It too is an unbreakable data set. 
I have the video on the lie that is the Jewish calendar. It was specifically created to throw you off, and it has done a fantastic job. Everybody who comes comes into RK exciting, well, well, hey, I don't understand, Jason. You said this is the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> 2024 is the year 5918 Anno Mundi, and we don't understand because the Jewish calendar, Hebrew year, this is such and such, such and such. It's because you don't know the facts. There isn't a single. Jew today that can sit in front of me and defend defend the integrity of the Jewish calendar. All it takes me, all I have to do is ask him to cite his sources. He's not going to be able to do it. But I did. I, show, I showed you exactly how they created it and when they created it, and you're going to be shocked. Those of you who have not seen that video on, on the lie that is the Jewish calendar <clears throat> in my... You have to understand, everything I'm talking about right now is in two playlists. Everything I'm talking about in this video. One is, is the Archaics playlist on bad data. Archaics analysis of bad data. That playlist. And the other one is the Anunophiles. The Anunophiles playlist goes deep off into these calendrical systems. Yeah, you, you guys just you need to understand. <clears throat> I don't want this video to go too long, but you have to understand uh, why. And I need you to stop. There's there's some of you being aggressive, go, going into these other guys' channels and and leaving. Listen, it's all the call outs already been done. They listen. They've already lost face with the community. They they've been feeling this. They understand their position. They know the trajectory of their career from this point on. They're not dumb. They're not dumb. The only thing they can do right now is churn and burn. That's all they can do is churn and burn. Get a whole bunch of people who don't know anything about anything and then turn around and, uh, you know, follow them for a while and then realize they're full of shit. But it's okay. It's okay. I don't need you to be aggressive. I'm I'm already doing that. And believe me, I'm I'm not, I, believe me. I just not. I'm I got too much more data coming out that's gonna further increase their ability to keep promoting what they're promoting without looking like total asses. So just let me do my job, guys. <clears throat> I don't I don't need I don't need archaics to lose face because you guys are getting too aggressive in their comment sections. Believe me, they've already felt it. They're going to feel us more. I'm at the post office on a mission. So, <clears throat> it's critical to understand that this isn't so, this isn't just a situation where, uh, you know, like people try to make it out to be. Oh, Jason, let them have their truths. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not liberal. But, uh, Oh, Jason, uh, uh, the the realm is big enough for you to put your material out there and leave them alone. Uh, yeah, well, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you the greatest. I'm going to tell you right now that all these arguments that I have heard from different people that are trying to get me to back off and just, just mind my business. I heard that one this morning, too. Um I've gotten over 15,000 new subs in what, the last two weeks? Yeah, we were all waiting for me to get to get 138. It was less than three weeks ago that I had, 100, that I had like 134,000 subs, and we were all talking about, oh, it's going to be awesome when I get 138. Then 138 came, and I only had 138,000 subs for two days. Then I had 139, then 140. Look, guys, <clears throat> the evidence alone, that the call-outs are working is the fact that so many people are trying to figure out, okay, what is it that's in archaics that is irrefutable? Because it must be irrefutable if all these guys who claim to have been promoting the truth and have the receipts are suddenly quiet. People are basically intelligent, and I'm going to continue running archaics with that assumption.